to be or not to be? That is the question. Today we're learning Shakespeare. Get thee gone and follow me no more. Some Shakespeare scenes and some monologues. Go to the creating a whole tribe of fops. And at the end of the day, we are going to have to perform for our entire office. The mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. But love may transform me into an oyster. <laughs> okay, so you guys get this. I don't. I have four words. <laughs> <laughs> Give me, quoth I, a roy to thee, which the rump-fed Runyon cries. To perform a Shakespeare play, one must understand the verse, the history, and the intention behind Shakespeare's writing. Do I not in plainest truth? Uh... <laughs> Today we are working with Lenora Pitts, and she knows a thing or two about Willie Shakes. Hi, my name is Leonora, and I'm an actor, I'm a filmmaker, and I coach Shakespeare. Oh, and I'm a dancer, and a mom, and a podcaster. Wow. Oh I have seven goodness. jobs. Here's how today's gonna break down. We're gonna warm up your body and voice because you have to say a lot of words. Then we're gonna break down the scenes and make sure that you understand what's happening in the scene, that you understand the language. If that, thy bent of love be honorable. I'm like, Pfft. And I actually have written out your scenes and monologues in contemporary language for you. Which we will also perform. You're telling me I'm so beautiful and lovely when I, I know you actually think I'm grody balls. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't even like each other. And then we're gonna go over to Fair Verona where we lay our scene, and you're going to perform them. Cool. <laughs> we are learning Shakespeare today because on August 10th, we are going to be putting on a live stream show of Romeo and Juliet. Honey, stand back. I'm gonna wipe his ass. This ain't no play like you've seen it before. It's a choose your own Shakespeare adventure. We're gonna have polls and ways for you to interact with the show directly so you can change what's happening, change the scenery, change the props. So y'all get to decide what happens in the scenes. You get to vote on what happens during the scenes. And we're gonna have special guests. Y'all heard about this Romeo fella? He's the talk of the town. The Capulets and the Montagues. This is the confrontation we've been waiting for. One look, a flirty conversation, and she's all in. Romeo originally originally showed up to hook up with an entirely different girl. This time, Daddy Capulet says yes. Oh. Oh. Romeo runs off with Friar Lawrence, mascara all smeared, and all the crying and the screaming. No joke, this is something that we have talked about doing for years. It's going to be a wild live show where you truly get to affect the outcome. This is a full production. I think it's gonna be an unprecedented live internet event. There's exclusive merch, it's gonna be sick. I think you're gonna to wanna to be there for this. Buy your tickets today at tryguys.com slash Romeo. To watch or not to watch? <laughs> There's no question there. We're just gonna wake up our bodies a little bit. We're not gonna do anything too strenuous. Take your two fists, put them between your feet, and that's your actual hip distance. This is my actual hip distance? Yes. Then where's all this? That was pretty good. Where's all this ass coming from? <laughs> I, for once, have a little bit of history with Shakespeare. I was in Twelfth Night. I was Sir Andrew, who's sort of like a buffoon who loves himself a lot. Nailed the role, obviously. Ma me my momu. Ma, Ma me my, my momu. momu. Lee, 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 Lee. That's my nickname, Lee. Lee, Lee, you don't Lee, have to Lee, say that, Lee, though, it's okay. Lee, that's, that's my nickname. nickname. Okay. That's my nickname. <laughs> this may be bad to admit as uh, one of the co-leads of the play. Um, I don't get Shakespeare. Breathe into your belly, make your belly look like you just ate Taco Bell. I know what that's like. <laughs> I love language, I love words, I love munching on them. The bigger the words, the more I want to put in my mouth. A lot of people are often intimidated by Shakespeare, right? If you're not familiar with it, it feels very far away from how we speak to each other. Madam, I come anon! But if that means not well, what's anon mean? It means, just a second! The people who lived during Shakespeare's time also did not speak like this. <laughs> right, he just made up all these goofy ways to talk. Yes! Because he wanted to. Madam, by and by I come! <laughs> to cease thy strife. <laughs> and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive, my soul. <laughs> okay, so Zach, so Thrive My Soul is not a question. 
Is it all slang? A lot of it is slang. It's and basically. And it's so dirty. Thou told me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am with wood within this wood because I cannot meet my Hermia. And what he's saying is, and I'm standing here with this pointless boner. <laughs> well, a totally pointless boner. <laughs> That's right here in this like really classic pipe. And here am I, wood within this wood. <laughs> Where hast thou been, sister? <sighs> Killing swine. Sister, where thou? Does been? everything sound better with a British accent? A thousand percent. So are we going to learn a British accent as well? No. Dang it. <laughs> right, right, because we already know it. Her husband's to Aleppo gone, master, oh the tiger. But in a sieve, I'll thither sail. And like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, and I'll do. Oh. I'll give thee a wind. The heart's kind. Thy another. Why do you think Shakespeare has endured? Part of it is that he understood the human condition in a way that really, really still speaks to people. They remind me of the Kardashians. Where have you been, sister? <sighs> Slaughtering pigs. Sister, what about you? <laughs> just sit. <laughs> Okay, he's, he just finished surfing. He's Rob. <laughs> I'll find a ship and make him wither dry. He will cease sleeping. He won't even be able to close his eyes. He will know he's cursed. And it will take him, like, a long time for him to waste away. They're talking about, like, yeah, this person did this to me. And they're like, yeah, we should, we should make him die. I get it now. Get it? Yeah. So a scene is great because you have someone to act off of, right? You're going to really actively pursue what you want in the scene. Okay. Oh, it's my line. <laughs> <laughs> good start, good start. What's, what's the first thing we should think of as a performer? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Like, if you're anxious, I bet your character's anxious. If you're- My character's gonna be anxious a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I will not stay thy questions. Oh yeah, you're right. Let me go. <laughs> So I think for the purposes of our live stream, the audience gets to choose different options for the performers to have to employ on the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are the audience. Yes. And I'll say, audience, yes. in the live vote, would you prefer for Keith to act like a dog the entire time or to try to strip Zach naked? Woo! Strip Zach naked! Perfect. Tempt not too much the hatred, Keith, of my spirit, for I am sick when I look at thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. Do not <laughs> impeach your modesty too much. Oh my God. To the hand. What is the difference with performing something like a monologue versus a, a scene with more partners? The obvious one is that when you have scene partners, you have something to bounce everything off of. You're in pursuit of something that you want the other character to do in the scene. And if you get what you want, probably the scene is over. <laughs> <laughs> Your virtue is my privilege. With a monologue, all of that want is happening just with you. I need to put my clothes back on. <laughs> Hi, my name is Zach. I'm going to be reading the role of Benedict from Much Ado About Nothing. Benedict. Not Benedict. Benedict. You Benedict. You Benedict. <laughs> you got picked it up. <laughs> picked it up. Went down. I will be sworn, but. I will not be sworn. I will not. She knows her shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Shakespeare is famous for his soliloquies, which means basically an actor alone on a stage speaking their internal thoughts. Oh, wise or all none, virtuous or I'll cheapen her. Uh, fair Never or. Never cheapen her. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. In Shakespeare's plays, people sort of walk around and say things like, you know, to be or not to be. He's literally contemplating suicide. Mm -hmm. That's the question. Are the seats warm? I fought it. <laughs> <laughs> Use it. Thou, nature, art my goddess. To thy law my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me? A monologue is a real challenge because you don't have anyone to bounce those motivations off of. It's just internal. You have to churn that motivation constantly. Who, in the lusty stealth of nature, take more composition and fierce quality than doth within a dull, stale, tired bed? Go to the creating a whole tribe of fops, got tween asleep and wake. Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. A lot of words in there. What he's saying is, I was created illegitimately out of a really passionate affair. 
my brother was created out of obligation. Oh. So I actually have been infused with a greater amount of passion, passion, drive, ambition, because I come from a great f Yeah. Whereas my brother comes from a lame lay. I Isn't often... that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call a Shakespeare burn. What is iambic pen, pentam, pentameter? What's iambic pentameter. So I, there's I can say that. iambic pentameter is uh, you can write in prose or you can write in verse. Writing in prose is just a paragraph. It's just regular dialogue. Doesn't have a rhythm or anything. Verse has a rhythm, and it's usually iambic pentameter, which means there's ten syllables, five beats. So it goes da 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 da. If you were men, as men you are in show, <laughs> then you would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and super praise my parts when I am sure you hate me with your hearts. And so you just want to make sure that you're hitting things and it will help you figure out what Shakespeare thought was important as well. None of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience. Gross man. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like gonna do a performance and that's kind of gonna be the thing that convinces people whether or not they should get a ticket to see more of it. <laughs> yeah, so don't f it up. I've never been in a Shakespeare play before. I read them in classes but I've never actually been in a Shakespeare production. Join us on the veranda. Thank you. <laughs> Where did we get this? I get very self-conscious when I'm acting. To be a good actor, you have to let yourself go, but then your natural response is to protect yourself. Hello, thank you, anxiety. You're along for the ride, but you're not driving. Often the anxiety you feel about the scene is the scene. So if right now you're feeling vulnerable, Benedict feels very, very vulnerable. And right? when I'm confused by what I'm saying, I match that to Helena's confusion. <laughs> and we're also on book. Script in uh, hand. Because this is new to them. They couldn't have memorized this. This is their first time trying Shakespeare. They're trying Shakespeare. Anytime we do one of these, I can't help but feel like it's an audition. Tensions are high. Even if it's only for like a couple of people in the office, you're putting yourself out there to be like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to perform something I'm not very good at. What do you think? <laughs> Zach is going to be playing Benedict from Much Ado About Nothing. So the idea behind this is, if I fall in love, and I've been making fun of people who fall in love, does that make me a fool? And such a man was Claudio. I have known when there was no music in him, but the drum and the fife. And now he rather hear the tabor and the pipe. He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and soldier. And now, <laughs> he turned to orthography. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not, no, I, I, I will not be sworn, but love may transform me into an oyster. <laughs> but I'll take an oath on it, till he hath made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One woman is fair, but I am well. Another is wise, but I am well. <laughs> Another virtuous, but I am well. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> but till all graces be in one woman, one woman now shall not come into my grace. <laughs> ah! The prince and Monsieur Love. I'll hide in the arbor. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! So next up, we're going to have Eugene as Edmund. Edmund is an illegitimate son of the Earl of Gloucester, and he's about to tell us of his plans. Thou, nature, art my goddess. To thy law, my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me for that I am some 12 or 14 moonshines lag of a brother? Why bastard, wherefore base, when my dimensions are as well compact, my mind 
as generous and my shape as true as honest maidens issue. Why brand they us? With base, with baseness, bastardy, base, base. Well, my legitimate, if this letter speed and my invention thrive, Edmund the base shall top the legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now gods, stand up for bastards. I will be playing the nurse in Juliet. <laughs> Get ready for that. Next up we have Helena. Lysander and Demetrius are both in love with Helena. So she's like very, very confused why the two men are in love with her. Poor Helena. Oh, oh spite. Oh, hell. I, I see. You all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and knew courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Could you not hate me? As I know you do. Uh, but you uh, must join in souls to mock me too? To vow and swear and super praise my parts when I am sure you hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals and love Hermia and now you both rivals to mock Helena? Tears in a poor maid's eyes with your derision. Oh, to make you sport. Yay! Good job! Take your bows, you guys! So those are obviously scenes that we did where we had a, a few hours to prepare them, but Romeo and Juliet live. The Try Guys are putting it on. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna have everything memorized and you, the viewers, get to affect how the show occurs. So you'll be able to vote live and make things change in the show. Please join us on August 10th, Romeo and Juliet live. Here, ish, here somewhere. <laughs> End scene. I'm your spaniel. <laughs> and Demetrius, the more you beat me, the more I'll no. fawn on you.